everyone, it's Maddie. I'm V, and today we're going to be doing a large unhaul of a bunch of books we purged from the shelves from the beginning of the year basically to now. A lot of these came off the shelves when we reorganised from colour order to genre and suddenly the books had nowhere to hide, we couldn't just keep a book because we needed more blue books, <laughs> so we have quite a few to show you, let's get to it. First I have the Blood Red Road trilogy by Moira Young, which I might have mentioned in a previous unhaul but it's seriously going this time. I have saved it far too many times thinking maybe I'll reread it again but it's been years since I read it the first time and I honestly don't think it's a series I want to return to and all of the books are in prime condition so I'm sure that a series collector would love to find this in a charity shop. Underwater by Marisha Reichard is leaving our shelves because I think I've just read one too many stories about girls with agoraphobia who use love as a way to get over it. That makes it sound like I really didn't enjoy this story when I did and I still have a Kindle edition so this book will be in my life in some way just not physically. Next we have have the Fifth Wave and the Infinite Sea by Rick Yancey, a series that swept booktube up a couple of years ago but has pretty much died a death since then. We never had any intention of getting the third book to complete the series, Maddie hasn't even read it so there's no point having these on our shelves anymore. Next we have Spare and Found Parts by Sarah Maria Griffin. This is a Frankenstein retelling and I'm sure it would be enjoyable to somebody that really likes sci-fi but for me the pace was just too slow and I don't think it's one that B's going to enjoy reading so we're going to give it to someone else. Um, next we have Word Nerd by Susan Nielsen. I almost kept this for a read or unhaul just because it's so short. That is just not a good enough reason to keep it on our shelves. Next we have Sunflowers in February by Felida Shrimpton. I read this in one of our most recent read all days or reading vlogs and in there I wasn't actually that impressed with this one because a lot of the concept is the same as The Lovely Bones which is one of my favourite books so we'll be passing this on. Next is Orbiting Jupiter by Gary D. Schmidt and this is one of the books chosen for Zoella's book club and we kept it because of this gorgeous gorgeous cover but I can look at that on Goodreads at any time. I did enjoy the story, I borrowed it from our local library and we picked it up at an Anderson Press event, but I don't think it's one I would have got for myself had it not been free. Next we have Speak by Laurie Hulse Anderson. This was one that we picked up from Book Barn. I think it was either this year or last year. We've had it on our shelves for a really long time and it's just a horribly battered copy. I'm still really interested in reading this story, but I think I'm going to get it on Kindle. Next is Kook by Chris Vick and I read this in one of our read all days, so if you want to hear about my experience I'll leave a link to that in the cards. Then we have Songs About a Girl by Chris Russell. This is quite a brick so it was taking up a lot of space on our shelves and I also have a Kindle edition so just having two copies didn't feel effective. This is a story about a girl who becomes the photographer for a famous boy band and whilst I enjoyed reading it I think it's just one of those stories that hasn't stuck with me and because it's the first in a series I'm really excited for someone else to discover it. Next is Half Bad by Sally Green. Once again I think this is one that turned up in an unhaul of last year but I clung on to it for some reason mostly because I did enjoy the first one and I read the whole series and I was just like I I need this physical marker as a sort of trophy that I finished the series. But as soon as we reorganised the shelves I realised it didn't have a place in my heart so it didn't deserve a place on the shelves. I really enjoyed The Smoke Thieves which is Sally Green's new YA fantasy series so I think I'll be collecting those instead. Next I have Paper Butterflies by Lisa Heathfield. We picked this one up in a charity shop for 99p and it was a story that I just haven't been able to stop thinking about even though I read it absolutely ages ago. It's just one that's so tragic you'll think you'll never forget it but it's got a black spine so it doesn't really stand out on our shelves and again it's one I have on Kindle so really we're just cleaning up our shelves for any doubles. Next I have a paperback of Flame in the Mist and the hardback of Smoke in the Sun by Renee Adier. This is a duology and I read this one but didn't connect to it and I don't think I was as intrigued enough as I thought to read the second one and this was sent to us unsolicited by Hodder and Staunton. And whilst I adore these covers I have a friend that's interested in reading the series so I'll be passing them on to her instead. Next we have Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch and this was one I was super excited for in our triad chapter but it turned out that the prologue was my favourite part because the rest of the story just didn't live up to this absolutely adorable cover and that's not enough reason to keep it. I'm sure if anyone's on the lookout for the next Anna and the French Kiss if they find this in a charity shop they will have hit a gold mine. Next I have Defy the Stars by Claudia Gray. This is the first book in a science fiction series and if you know Maddie and I you know that sci-fi is not really our thing. Once again this is a story that I really did enjoy for its adventure but a friend has already claimed dibs on it so I'll be passing it on to her. Mostly I was keeping this book because of the gorgeous back cover. Next 
Next I have Heartless by Marissa Meyer, again one I read on Kindle and somehow have a physical copy of. This is a retelling of The Red Queen from Alice in Wonderland and that's one of my least favourite classics so it doesn't really make sense to keep it on the shelves especially because I love the Lunar Chronicles a lot more. Next we have The Bone Season and The Mime Order by Samantha Shannon, this is the first two books in her series. We have had these books since the beginning of our booktube channel and I have not once tried to reach for them. I'm pretty sure we got them at a two for five pounds deal which is great value for this series but the covers have already changed and Maddie has the first one on her kindle and I'm more likely to read it there. It's a very dense fantasy world and that's not like what I'm used to reading so we'll see if I eventually get round to them. Next we have All the Rage by Courtney Summers. This was a book I read for my dissertation and now that university is over I want to distance myself from that as much as possible. This was another difficult read like Paper Butterflies so although again it will stick with me it's not really one I want on my shelves because I can remember it, I don't have to reread it. We picked up The Incredible Adventures of Cinnamon Girl by Melissa Keel at a Stripes book event years ago and I think we read about 60 pages on the train but then put it down and had other reading commitments and never picked it up again and it's one that's really slipped under our radar, I haven't heard anybody talking about it and I think that lack of hype has meant that this ended up in the unhaul pile. Then we have Been Here All Along by Sandy Hall. This was a really cute LGBT romance story but it had so much unfulfilled potential so this is probably the biggest shame to get rid of but it'll probably mean a lot to somebody if they find it and realise that it's MM. Next I have The Killables by Gemma Marley which I picked up for £1.50 at a used bookstore and I wanted it because I was really in the mood for some dystopian and it fit the bill, I enjoyed it at the time but it was definitely nothing special. It has a sequel that I don't intend to read so I'm happy to just let it back out into the world. Then we have Stags by M.A. Bennett. This was a book from the YA Book Prize this year but unfortunately I didn't like it as much as everyone else and that feels like quite an outlying opinion. If you're interested in my experience of reading this one I read it for a read all day last year so I'll leave that link in the description. And finally we have Ink by Amanda Sun. This we picked up from a charity shop years and years ago because of the gorgeous cover but it's one that I haven't reached for and I don't think I will. It's time for us to only read books that we're genuinely excited for so this one has to go. So those are the 28 books we're unhauling in 2018. This is practically a whole shelf full but you wouldn't be able to tell because there's still so many books behind us. If we unhaul anything else throughout the year it won't be in this large chunk so you can catch up with those decisions in our reading diaries. Thank you everyone so much for watching. We make bookish videos every week so subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Maddie and B and we'll see you next time.